One of my favorite groups of dinosaurs is Ceratopsians. Ceratopsians are really flipping cool dinosaurs. Just look at that. And on top of that, they're a group of dinosaurs that is incredibly diverse, like a, a bunch of different head ornamentation across the board, different types of frills, different shapes of beaks. They're just really cool dinosaurs. You guys seem to like the Spinosaurid video that I did in this vein, so I figured I could do one on another group of dinosaurs that, again, I am incredibly passionate about, that being the Ceratopsians. So in this video, we will be taking a look. That looked very creepy right there. Laura just moved, but it's because of a cat. Yeah. <laughs> but what we will do for this video is take a look at all of the on-screen appearances of Ceratopsians across the Jurassic franchise. This includes both movies and shows. And I'll probably sprinkle in a few other media uh, appearances that we have here and there. Uh, primarily from like the Jurassic World website, as well as... Uh, she turned off the lights. <laughs> How did you even do that? But we'll primarily look at all of the on-screen appearances. We, I will sprinkle in some evolution uh, appearances here and there and some, uh, you know, Jurassic World website appearances, but for, it's primarily going to be focused on the on-screen appearances. Starting off with the original, and it's a really good one to start off with, is the Triceratops. It made its debut all the way in the first Jurassic Park film. Of course, it had a small appearance in the, the later sequel, The Lost World Jurassic Park, as well as very briefly in Jurassic Park 3. I think we can see it very briefly on, on the plane ride. Let's primarily focus on its appearance in Jurassic Park, where it is represented as an amazing, amazing animatronic. Like this is by far one of my favorite scenes in the entire film. I think it was so well done. The actor's uh, reaction to the animatronic, as well as just the animatronic itself, the way that it moves, the way that it breathes, it, it just looks fantastic. Design-wise, it's really not too bad. It really feels like a 90s dinosaur, of course, because this movie was made in the 90s. And it seems like the species that is represented here is Triceratops horridus. Because because if you don't know, there are two known species of Triceratops. There's T. horridus and there's T. prorsus. The easiest way to identify them, for me anyway, is by looking at the nasal horn. On T. horridus, it's usually a lot a lot smaller, whereas on prorsus, it is a lot longer. And also, prorsus is the one that went extinct at the very end of the Cretaceous with T. rex. It's the one that went through that mass extinction right there. So that means horridus is the earlier species. Uh, this does seem to be T. horridus because of that nasal horn. That's mainly what I'm going off of. And proportion-wise, I'm not the big biggest fan of the way that this guy looks and that's mainly because I'm a huge fan of our current reconstructions of Triceratops. Like you look at something like Prehistoric Kingdom and I just love the way that that looks. The like kind of elongated skull, the massive beak, and just the way that the horns sit on the animal's skull. I think it looks fantastic in there. I'm not a big fan of how stubby this one looks in the skull. And of course I'm not a fan of the elephant feet. Ceratopsians had very interesting feet. They had like three toes that were just kind of on the ground like this with two of them that were hanging off the back that were kind of vestigial. Very unique and awesome looking feet. It's just very weird to see elephant feet on something like that. One cool thing I want to point out is the fact that it seems to have large scales random throughout the body. That is something that is also true for Triceratops and likely other Ceratopsians, where it's like they had regular size scale, scales relatively speaking, and then every once in a while there would just be a huge scale, just, just randomly throughout the body. And that is, that is present here. That's very cool. All around though, very awesome appearance. Very great first Ceratops scene in my opinion. So a great start to this list. But wait, I'm sure that some of you have already typed or are going to type that there is of course Triceratops that shows up in Jurassic World. As well as in Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. As well as I think Dominion, but I'm not too sure about that one. But I think it does kind of, I, th I think it shows up in that Ceratops scene herd. Either that or that's that's simply just Sinoceratops and Nazutoceratops. I think it's there. This one, interestingly enough, that seems to be the other species of Triceratops. Judging from that nasal horn, this one seems to represent Prorsus. Again, the one that went extinct at the very end of the Cretaceous period with T. rex. So that's pretty cool. We have both of the species of Triceratops represented here. That is an awesome thing to think about. Um, and the model-wise seems to keep pretty consistent to the one that shows up in Jurassic Park, um, although they don't have the large scales randomly throughout the body. It's a bit unfortunate, but other things are present here, such as the stubbier skull, as well as the elephant feet. One thing I also want to mention are those epicipitals, which are those spikes that grow on Triceratops' frill. Uh, one interesting thing about those is that they start to, to fuse to the skull as the animal grows. And especially on Prorsus, they would become basically non-existent as the animals fully mature. I think they are still partially present on Horridus when it's mature, 
Uh, but on Prorsis, they're basically not there anymore. That's also one thing I can mention because these guys do seem to be fully grown. They also have much longer tails than what Triceratops had in life. Triceratops had very weird tails. They had very, very stubby tails. The tail that they have in Jurassic World makes sense. You know, that makes sense for a dinosaur because most dinosaurs have tails that are like that in proportion to their body size. But uh, Triceratops did not. Most Ceratopsians did not, actually. So that's one thing we can also look out, look out for in the, in the rest of the list. So we spent a decent amount of time on Triceratops. Let's go ahead and move on to our next Ceratopsian, that being Cynoceratops. Now, I have heard some sources say that this was initially supposed to be Pachyrhinosaurus. And I 100% believe it because it does not look like a Cynoceratops at all. Uh, in the skull in particular, the skull looks a lot more like Pachyrhinosaurus lacustae, which is actually my favorite species. And Pachyrhinosaurus is actually one of my, like my favorite uh, Ceratopsian. But lacustae is often identified by having these three horns right at the base of the frill. Or, you know, the, the number does vary, but they do have something like that. And this Cynoceratops has that too. So I assume that they were trying to represent lacustae, and I assume that means that they were going to place horn, a horn on Pachyrhinosaurus, which is unfortunate because it didn't have a horn. It had a boss which is that massive bone right there. But we'll talk about Pachyrhinosaurus more later. So as a Cynoceratops, it's certainly a lot more blocky and just massive and just 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 huge, I guess, which is a synonym for massive, I, su I suppose. Not really a fan of it. You know, in terms of Ceratopsian designs on this list, this one's pretty low on, on it. Um, but, you know, it's pretty cool that a dinosaur like Cynoceratops is technically in the Jurassic franchise. You know, it lets a few more people know about it. So, uh, you know, there's that. The tail is also proportionally long compared to how it probably would have been in life. So just very different. Proportionally, it just looks very odd. I'm just not a big fan of it. The colors are cool, though. I think the colors are really cool. In that same vein, there's also Spinoceratops. Introduced in Camp Cretaceous, it is a hybrid between a Spinosaurus and a Cynoceratops. Get the nice name of Spinoceratops. They look like this as babies, which is very cool because they're a lot more stubby in appearance, which makes sense because Ceratopsians typically are stubby when they're young. And then as they grow, we in Jurassic World Evolution, we get to see them actually moving around and all that good stuff, and they look like this. Um, very cool. I'm not the biggest fan of hybrids all around. I was kind of getting tired about, of them. I mean, uh, you know, there's some that I like, but Spinoceratops, it's, it's fine. You know, it's, it's basically just the Spinoceratops with a sail on it. So we'll, we'll go ahead and move on from that one and go on to Nazutoceratops. Love the way that these guys look. Uh, they're, what, what's cool about this one is that sexual dimorphism is present, which is just the differences between males and females. Um, the male looks like this. It has the, this extra plating on it, on the nasal portion of it, uh, massive horns that curve more, uh, more forward, as well as just this huge frill. And it just looks a, a lot more gnarly in appearance. Whereas the female looks like this and you know, actually a lot more representative of the Nazutoceratops specimens that we have. I think that's cool that they took the time to, to differentiate that, to kind of ground it into something like that, to make it feel like these are real animals that have, you know, sexual dimorphism and stuff like that. They also have the baby right here, which again is stubby in appearance, which does match up to Ceratopsians. You know, Ceratopsians would have been very uh, stubby in their appearance when they're young. And then as they grow, they start to gain the features that we see in the older Ceratopsians. The feet do seem to have the type of elephant-like look to them as well, but the colors are very cool and the skull looks great. The skull looks pretty much just like Nazutoceratops, uh, which translates to uh, big nose horn face. So there's that fun fact. <laughs> because it has a big nose and those horns. The horns that are very similar to bull horns that kind of grow out to the side first and then curve forward, uh, which is very cool. But Nizutoceratops is cool. Dogs are barking. <laughs> those are my dogs. And the cat's on my lap again. All the animals are, are going in. <laughs> All the animals are going insane today. <laughs> and now we're on to my favorite Ceratopsian, that being Pachyrhinosaurus. Of course, made, it made its official canon debut in uh, Jurassic World Chaos Theory, where it has a very good design. I've already talked about this a lot, so I probably won't talk about it too much more here, uh, but I really do think that this design is fantastic. It's either, it's, the species that's represented here is either uh, Piratorum or Canadaensis, but... Regardless, I think it looks really good. The boss is present. They didn't give it a horn instead, which I think is always a good, always, don't mind me, which is always a good thing. Um, and uh, the beak looks really good. The proportions look pretty decent. The feet are a little bit closer to a typical Ceratopsian foot. 
and the tail is a lot more stubby in comparison to the body, which is a good step in the correct dire direction. I think it looks really good. It also has an appearance in Jurassic World Evolution as well, and I don't really mind that design too much. I don't think it's as good as the one in Chaos Theory, but I don't think this one's bad either. That one represented in there is Lacustai, once again represented by those three horns at the base of the frill. Uh, but yeah, no, pretty consistent designs for Pachyrhinosaurus, if you ask me. And then finally, we have Microceratus, which was introduced in Jurassic World Dominion. Uh, but it, it's basically been around for the longest time. I mean, there was even this website design that looks like this. Looks really cool. Looks really good. Uh, I think the website design is my favorite, but I really don't mind the, the ones in... Uh, in uh, Jurassic or er, in Dominion, I think that the ones in Dominion do look really good too. They certainly remind me of the '90s, like uh, '90s designs of the of dinosaurs, like paleo art designs of those animals. That's what they really remind me of. They're just a lot more blocky and not nearly as gracile as uh, Microceratus likely was. Uh, and fun fact about Microceratus, fun fact portion. Um, it was initially named as Microceratops when it was first discovered, but Turns out the name, the genus name of Microceratops was already taken by a type of wasp. And the rules state that two separate animals cannot share the same genus name. So it was then later named to uh, Microceratus, which translates to small horned. Microceratops, I believe, would have translated to uh, small horned face, you know, in, in line to Triceratops, which translates to three horned face. But especially when we see these guys in Jurassic World Evolution 2 through the newest DLC, I think that they look really good when they're running around and you can give them some really cool looking colors. So I'm very happy with that, with the way that this guy looks. I think it does fit that Jurassic Park style way more than most other uh, Jurassic World designs, in my opinion. Uh, so I, I, I really like them. And there we go. Those are the Ceratopsians of the Jurassic franchise, the on-screen Ceratopsians again. Um, you know, maybe I'll expand this series a little bit more where I talk about other Jurassic franchises like Ceratopsians and things like that. But for now, I want to just keep it mostly to the uh, movies and shows. You know, I think that's mainly what I want to focus on. I got so many series going on right now, so I can't really go in too many directions with all of this. I'd like to keep things a little bit more focused, but videos like this, I think, are just really fun, especially when it's a lot more focused to something like the Jurassic franchise instead of going to different, uh, you know, different media things out there. Um, so, you know, very fun, and I hope something like this can continue because there are other groups of dinosaurs in the Jurassic franchise that could also be looked at. But um, yeah, I think that they're pretty good across the board, and I think that Ceratopsian designs in the franchise are only improving, uh, especially in Jurassic World Evolution. Like that Styracosaurus design? Whew! looks awesome but let me know if you'd like to see more videos like this if you want to request a group of dinosaurs i'd be happy to look at it and uh you know we'll, we'll get to that at some point so thank you guys so much for watching